welcome to Hudson Valley Knits Podcast. I am Amy, your host. I am Memers on Ravelry and Memers66 on Instagram and Twitter. I am currently at this little lake. It's not on the map, hold on. Or it's actually more like a pond. I can't even read it. I'll find out the name, but I am basically in Fawnstock State Park in Cold Spring, New York. It is very close to the Taconic, almost right off the Taconic State Parkway, Parkway. And Route 301 cuts right through this park. Uh, 301 is also known as the Cold Spring Turnpike. And I just finished my hike, which... Um, for today, I, I'll, I'll talk about the hike at the end of the podcast, but um, it, was a, it was supposed to be about four miles, but my, my um, tracker said it was more like three, but it could have been because I didn't start recording my, my miles right away. But anyway, I have a lot to talk about today, so much, um, and I think, so I think it's going to be a long one. So I'm going to get right to the knitting. So if you want, don't want to hear me talking, um, <laughs> you don't have to stay and, and listen. But um, yeah, so the the big thing for this week is I went to Stitches United yesterday, uh, or not yesterday, Friday. I took Friday off from work to go up to um, Hartford, Connecticut with Sandy, and we went to Stitches United. So I have boatloads of stash to show you. I also um, have a few books that I recently bought that I'm really excited about that I just wanted to talk. It's not really a book review, just wanted to talk about them. And maybe after I read them, I can share more. And then after I show my all my knitting stuff and yarn, <laughs> which will take half the day, uh, I'll talk about that sh summer stripe uh, cow as C-A-L cow. Um, I briefly mentioned it last week, so, or last uh, podcast rather, and I'll talk about that. I have a little more information. Um, us girls are going to have a huddle Tuesday evening to iron out all the details and finalize, but the uh, Ravelry group is created, so please join the Ravelry group. It's Summer Stripe Along Ravelry group. And I guess, you know what, I'll put a link to it in the show notes and in the Ravelry announcement thingamabob. But without further ado, let me show you um, my whip. I have worked on a few things this week. I didn't bring the stuff I'm not working on, namely the, um, mostly the, the, uh, Apple Blossom shawl that I'm working on by Donna Dracunis. I ran out of yarn as I anticipated I would. I absolutely did. I couldn't, I didn't even start the last section, which is like the border section. I didn't even get to that before I ran out of yarn. Luckily, I found some um, ladies on Ravelry that knit this same shawl with the same colorway and they had some leftovers and they both sent me their leftovers. Have it with me. So luckily, this one, one woman sent me all the colors she had left over, which I really didn't need, but their colors are not as brown as mine are, which surprises me. So I don't know. It'll be fine though. I don't care. Here's the other the one that was sent me, which is still a lot less, a lot more pink and a lot less brown than mine was. Um, so I don't have that shawl with me but I do have the yarn I need now to finish it and hopefully next podcast we'll have that done and it will just have to uh, I'll have to wait and block it when I go up I guess I think Mother's Day is probably Mother's Day weekend is probably the next time I'll be up at my parents house so thank you to the lovely ladies who gave me the yarn they wouldn't they didn't want any money but they uh, let me send them some postage and I Bought them each a pattern on Ravelry as a thank you. All right, so whips. My Koala Socks by um, 
LSU. Uh, I talked about them with this particular pattern every time I podcast. I love the, the way the sock looks, but I don't like the way the pattern's written. But uh, And if you want to hear why, you could just listen to the past couple of podcasts. But here's the first finished one. This has been done a while. I love the pooling and I love the yarn. It's Socks at Rock Light in the Sea Scum, sea scum Run colorway. And here's where I am on the second sock. Just started, I just, just started the uh, heel turn. And again, what I do is because now the foot is going to be knit and stuck in it and I would have had way too many, um, it's like a bug stuck in my hand. I would have had way too many stitches on the needle. I'm doing two gussets. One, I'll do a gusset for the, the heel flap and I'll also do a little gusset on the um, instep of the foot to get rid of some of the extra stitches. So this is, um, and you know, now that I have her pattern adjusted for all the different gauges, I'm enjoying it, but um, yeah, it's not the best, best written pattern. It's not a good written pattern at all. One of the charts doesn't work at all. Um, so I just kind of fudged it. Yeah, just really poorly written pattern. Unless you are good at tweaking things. If you're one of those people that you just want to follow the step-by-step -step pattern because you just want to relax and knit, don't, don't knit these socks. <laughs> don't knit this pattern. So that's Koala. Um, I did work a little bit on my vanilla socks. I'm still working on my March socks, my Lucky Leprechaun socks. So let's see, can you get an idea of how much I've done? Yeah, just a little bit more of the foot, of the leg. I think I just started the leg last podcast. I was like up to here. And uh, you know, I got a couple more inches done. I, I didn't knit too much on these. And just as a reference, Here's the first sock finished, so you can see what it looks like. It's a, an afterthought heel, and I used um, um, uh, <laughs> oh come on, Sus Susan B. Anderson's sock pattern for the afterthought heel, and a lot of her tips that she gave to make a nice smooth uh, afterthought heel and toe decreases and whatnot. So. Um, I think I mentioned it before. I didn't really like the afterthought heel. To me, it's just, why don't you, you might as well just do a fishlet skips heel and then you don't have to pick up stitches and whatnot. And a fishlet lips kiss heel does not require, um, stockinette stitch. This one does. Or cutting stitches. So for me, it looks the same as a fishlet lips kiss heel but it's a little more complicated. And, but I'm not saying I'll never do another afterthought heel. I, I might, I might rabbit, I might. <laughs> All right, so what I've been working on um, a lot this past couple of weeks was um, the Ripley's tank that I'm making for my daughter. I think I showed you or a picture of it last week last podcast I don't think I I think I had not gotten the yarn yet I think it came like the Monday after and it's in my um knit spin farm bag my, some of my favorite bags are Joanna Springs bag um I ran out of yarn I bought the recommended for this um size I wanted to knit and I did I got stitch gauge although my row gauge was a little loose looser than than the um, requirement um, but I still I ran out of yarn before I even split for the front and the back so I and I checked my gauge like five times counted gauge at different spots in the sweater to make sure that it wasn't a problem with my gauge and even though my row count was off it's off by like a half a stitch every four inches that's not gonna make a 
big difference in the amount of yarn. Certainly not enough that I should have run out before I even split for the front and the back. So I, I let them know in the notes and I ordered two more of um, skeins from Quince and Company. And uh, so this won't, this will be on hold until those come in. And the reason I bought two, even though I might just need one, I'm, I'm really not quite sure if one will do it, but kind of sure. <laughs> I bought two because they um, tell you to knit the uh, shoulder straps from both ends of your last skein, and I don't like to knit like that, so I'd just rather just buy the extra skein so I can have two separate skeins for that. But here is the body. And um, it, it, I am right at the point where I will cast off. So this is the front, actually, you're seeing here. And you can see it's, it's a little long, and that's because of my stitch, my row gauge. But here's the back. I don't know if you could see. It has darts in it. And these markers, oh, let me actually let me have it centered. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Here are the sides, and here are the dart markers. So in between these dart markers are going to be like the um, the little lace piece at the back, and all these stitches plus seven from the front will be cut, um, uh, bound off. And I guess you can see the front is much wider than the back. So yeah, and here's how much yarn I have left. really crazy um, so this is just you know it's a, just a basic stockinette stitch sweater nothing fancy I um it, w it went really fast because it's a worst of weight yarn and um, I don't I pretty much don't mind knitting with the linen it's nothing spectacular but it's fine um, yeah so I like the yarn I I love how the pattern's going to look. I think it's going to be a little wide on Rachel. She's she's like a size 10, and this seemed to be a little too wide for that and stretchy. So I hope she doesn't mind that. I really did guess on what size, and I did it based on her cup size. So she's like a small, she's like a C cup. And I just looked up what the bust measurements were for like an average C cup person. And I chose that size to make her. But, um, you know, she's like I said, she's a size 10, so her hips aren't like as wide. And I think these might be a little wide for her. I bet if I. I almost just. I almost thought of ripping the whole thing out and starting over with uh, a couple of sizes smaller. And I, you know what? I still might do that. I still might do that just so it looks nice on her. I don't know yet. I don't know. I have to think about that. So that is what I spent most of my time knitting on. I did knit a bit also as well on my exploration station. I'll show that to you. Love this pattern. Love it. Love the colors I picked. Um, I love the yarn. Sana is such a luxurious, wonderful yarn. So here is how it looks. Most of my ends are woven in. I like to weave in ends as I go for the most part. Hold on, I'm just getting the strings out of the way. And here is kind of the best shot I'm going to be able to give you because of the size of the needle. But I think I have one more wedge after this, and then um, I start the next clue, uh, what was the second clue. And uh, yeah, I love it so far. It's um, Aunt, uh, Au Naturel, which is the cream, obviously. The blue is Glacier. The uh, yellow here is Harvest. And if you look, it's got splashes of like orange and pink in it. You can see that there. You can see it better on this side. It's 
it's just gorgeous. And then this is um, crushed raspberries. Yeah, I love this pattern. I'm, I'm really excited about it. I love uh, knitting on it. Don't knit on it as much as I'd like to because of the other stuff I got going on. Um, I am also knitting a, a, a linen tank for myself out of Knit Picks. Um, what's it called? I forget what the name of the yarn is, but their, their version of linen it has a, a little bit of um, cotton co uh, content. And um, I want to say it's called Lacy or I forget, but um, that is for the fruity um, you and me cow, the fr fruity knitter you and me cow. Um, but she's, I think she's given to the end of the summer for that. So there's no rush with it. And like I said, I can uh, change it up. Um, as far as my goals contest, cow, whatever, we're on whips this quarter. I will resume knitting my apple blossom shawl. And after that is done, I will pick up my um, Alice Starmore wrap that I worked on years and years ago. But... And when the socks are done, I'll knit some self-striping socks because of the summer stripe knit along. And, um, yeah, that's the plan. I have two pairs of socks on the needles now, and when they're both done, I'll knit some self-striping. I have plenty of that in my stash. Um, I actually bought some self-striping yarn from Into the World at the Stitches event. Um, I have one last, it's, it's kind of a whip, I just have to swatch, got my tax return and I splurged, not only on Stitches United, spent a few hundred bucks there, um, I bought an Alice Starmore kit, I couldn't help it, and I got it in the mail yesterday. And I opened it up and I was like, I have to start this right away because it, it will bring me so much happiness. So I kind of, I posted a picture on, um, <laughs> on Instagram and I said, uh, self-restraint, be the hell with self-restraint, I'm knitting this now. So here is the pattern. It's called um, Abalon. And here's a close-up. Love these colors. Oh my freaking God, it is so beautiful. I am always like, I knit with the Bainin, my the Mark sweater and my recent uh, cable knit sweater were both knit with her Bainin yarn, which I did not like. It broke a, and a, it was split in a lot of places. Not split, but like cut. Like it was crazy, and there were tons of knots in it. But her two and three ply um, Hebrides yarn is the most beautiful yarn I've ever knit with, ever, ever, ever. Um, my, uh, I have a, a Fair Isle sweater. I've worn it when I podcast before of, of hers. And it's breathtakingly beautiful. The colors, first of all, the quality of the yarn is top notch. It's a great Shetland wool to knit with. It softens up after you wash it. It doesn't pill. It's just beautiful but the what takes my breath away are the colors Alice Starmore is the most amazing color alchemist you can imagine and the way that she creates the colors and then the way she puts them together for her designs I haven't knit one of her daughter's designs yet um, they look beautiful and there are some that I would love to make. I don't know if I ever will have the chance, but because there's <laughs> other Alice Starmore ones, I, I have kits for. I have kits for three other, two, uh, one uh, Nakraga, which is a cable one, which I will, I think I'm going to end it soon. The other one is the um, 
the one that you saw I swatched for, uh, I think like two or three episodes ago, I showed you the swatch for, um, I can't remember the name of the sweater, Fruity Knitting just knit one for her daughter. And I was, it, it has a little bit, a band of uh, color work. I, the, the title will come to me or I'll put it in the banner, but there's a little bit of color work at the bottom. And I wasn't happy with the gold, which is what the pattern calls for, which is um, golden plover, beautiful color. I just didn't want that. I didn't want the color she picked, which was like a, a nice navy blue and the golden plover. I chose a, uh, like a mocha-y, chocolatey brown with little pops, little flecks of color in it. Uh, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but I, I have some um, Jameson DK stash. So I, I went through that to see if there was anything that might complement it because they're both DK weights and um, did a big long swatch. And I found a pink that kind of went very well with the color of the, the main color of the sweater but I don't know if I I don't know I don't know yet I might order a few more skeins of some DK weight to play around but I didn't she doesn't have a, a, as a wide a selection of colors for the D, for the three ply so um, I that's why I went to Jameson to look at their colors to see what might work and I have like a book of, of all their colors with, it has actual yarn in it so I could kind of get an idea of what it looks like in real life. But anyway, back to the swatch. I did this yesterday. So I spent a couple of hours yesterday winding all the balls. I'm gonna get this closer. And um, after I wound all the balls, I started the gauge swatch. I started the gauge swatch down here with size four needles. The pattern calls for threes. And um, I tend to knit tight and I knit my looks and tear cardigan way too tight. And that's why it's, it's too small on me. I knit that one with size two needles and that was a big mistake. So I jumped up to four and I knit the bottom with the fours. And before wet blocking it, I just did a quick measurement and I knew it was going to be, uh, the gauge was going to be too big or uh, too big because I think I was, it's 28 stitches for 10 centimeters and I was, before wet blocking I was getting 26 and usually when you wet it, it plumps up and, and your ga gauge gets even bigger. So I knew that the fours were not going to be any good so I knit the top half here with the threes which is what the pattern called for which is 3.25 millimeters. And I have the perfect stitch count after wet blocking. I have one spot I was short like a half a stitch for four, uh, for 10 centimeters. And other spots I had it right perfect, which is 28 stitches for every 10 centimeters. But my row gauge is too big. It's too loose. Um, she's asking for 32 rows for 10 centimeters and I am getting like, depending on where I measure it, like 30, 29, 30. So that's going to affect the length of my sweater and it's going to affect the size of my armholes. Now the length I can adjust because she has like a, a band on the bottom where she, it's just a uh, before you start the main chart, it's just like checkerboardy, and I could throw in some extra rows there. Or I, I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about that. I, I or I could just be fine with it being a little shorter. It's it's like a jacket length. Um, I have to figure out exactly how many inches or centimeters that will amount to and decide if I want to make adjustments for that. But isn't this swatch so pretty? I can't wait to cast on the sweater. <laughs> it's going to take me hours just to cast on because it requires like some ridiculous amount to cast on like 300 or something like that. Something ridiculous like that. But this is like 
going to be so exciting. And I really love like, like this, the problem with the road gauge. I love sitting down and figuring that stuff out. Like, like that's kind of fun for me. <laughs> like problem solving and calculating and all that stuff. And yeah, I like it. Anyway, what else we got? So let me show you everything I got at Stitches. I think I covered everything, right? Yeah. Let me show you the damage done at Stitches. So I was debating on and off whether to take a day off from work to go to a knitting event, but Friday was the only day Sandy could go. And what cinched it for me was that Lost City Knits was going to be there. Lost City Knits is um, one of my favorite yarn companies. Along, She's up there with Spirit Trail Fiber Works. And Alice Starmore is by far the, my favorite. But I don't know if I would really call her an indie dyer. But uh, Spirit Trail Fiber Works and Lost City Knits, they are like, if they're there, I'm there. So I wore my lace shawl that I made with her silk lace, which I made it in the beginning of this year. I want to wear it to a friend's wedding, but she had her engagement party and I wore it to that as well, but I will wear it to her wedding too. Um, it's a beautiful boo knits. It's called Out of Darkness, I think. And I have beautiful beads. It came out wonderful. But uh, so I did most of my spending at her booth and that was, basically made the decision easy for me and I decided to go so without further ado oh and she gave me a skein of her silk lace for a podcast prize so it'll probably be for the senior love along but that is like a big deal because it's a hundred percent silk and that's a sixty dollar skein of yarn that she gave me for let's see if I can find it here This is going to be one of the prizes for the senior level long. It's a beautiful like turquoise blue and it is just to die for. It's a thousand yards of lace weight yarn, 100 grams, gorgeous, Cerulio is the name of the color. So this is going to be a podcast prize. Thank you so much, Denise. Alright, so, to the other bag first. So, I, one of the things I wanted to do is I knew she was bringing Jameson with her, Jameson and Smith. So, I stocked up on some neutrals of Jameson and Smith, and she has the larger size skeins. So, I bought just some basics to make hats with because I have an enormous inventory of uh, Shetland uh, two ply in all different array of colors that I've collected over the years and a whole bunch was given to me by a friend who was de-stashing and she gave me like two bags like this full of different colors because she's a she's actually a designer but I bought some cream some gray and some brown for, as neutrals. These are, I think they're 120 something grams. Oh, say. But um, anyway, they're twice the size as the smaller ones. I think they're 50. Or maybe they're 50 grams. Anyway. And I bought three colors that I felt I didn't have represented in my uh, stash. So I got this beautiful sapphire blue and this like um, kind of to tawny, like uh, reminds me of toffee. And there's one more in here. It's this. like a uh, plums with all sorts of hits of colors in it but 
wanted to, you know, get some more colors. So that's one thing I did. Then I picked out for another bonnet shawl a skein of the silk lace weight for myself. This is in the colorway Berry Jumbly. It's a beautiful dark rose pink. Berry Jumbly gorgeous. This will be a boo knit shawl. And then I got two skeins of her alpaca lace weight. Oh, excuse me, three skeins for two different projects. And I'm going to show you the projects that I'm going to make with these because I already know they're in her book, Ultima Tool, which I brought with me. Here's Denise's book. I talked about this when I first got it last year. Um, there are two patterns in it I want to knit. So I'll show you the patterns and then I'll show you the yarn I got for it. One is just a simple cowl. It will, I could make um, more than one uh, with this skein. Here's the cowl. It is called um, Vol Cowl. Uh, VOE and it is a beautiful lace pattern. I can I can make it longer or I can make multiples and give them as Christmas gifts. I'm not sure. But this is the color I bought for that. It's called Cheshire. And it's uh like a teal a teal color but it leaning towards blue and then the other one is this one the sky and sea um, scarf it's gorgeous lace weight I hope you can see the details there I bought the same colors that her sample was knit in because I, when I saw it together, I, I fell in love with the color scheme. And here they are. One is called Extra Virgin. It's like an uh, olive oil green, uh, uh, olive green. And the other one's called Arte, Artem, Art, Artemisia, Artemisia. I can't pronounce it, but it's like a, 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 a smoky blue. And these are going to look beautiful together. So, here's the name. I don't know if you can read it. But if you want to get the same color, it's extra virgin, virgin and this. So this is alpaca, baby alpaca. So it will, if the sample was kind of floofed up, whereas if I knit this, knit this in the silk, which I still could do, because one skein of the silk is uh, more than enough to knit uh, the whole uh, scarf with. So that is what I got from Denise. That was where I spent most of my money. I also stopped at Into the World, which was not only was there no line, it was, it was empty. It was the end of the day. It was very quiet there. It broke my heart because I know these vendors are counting on a certain amount of sales to make it worth, worth their mile, <laughs> worth their while to be there. And I know that the last stitches event they had in Hartford, Connecticut was terrible. I, w I was there and it was dead and it was a Saturday and they didn't fill up the vent. They didn't even have the whole place filled up with vendors. This event, they had half the space they had as, um, than in, they had in the past um, and they had some really good vendors there but they also had quilters and um, uh, 
uh, sewers and weavers and rug hook. They had every kind of craft, which I thought was a great idea. Anyway, I started into the world and where are you? Oh, it's at the bottom of my bed. Oh my God. Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey, self striping. This is going to be for Mark. And he was thrilled because he's a big Doctor Who fan. So that is going to be cast on for the stripe, summer stripe along. Doesn't help with my <laughs> nip from stash goal, but oh well. All right. So. Now I have to kind of dig down. All right, so I got some stitch markers too, and I'm not sure yet if I might use one of them as a uh, prize, but I really want them all, <laughs> selfishly. I do have to come up with another prize. Oh, I bought beads just in case I need beads for my uh, lace weight that I got from Denise. Anyway, let me show you my beautiful stitch markers. I got one set is just like a, um, uh, knit, looks like a stockinette stitch and the other set are sheepies. I know, I should give one away as a, a prize for the uh, summer stripe along. And then I got a set of glass stitch markers. They're little hearts and they remind me of those flowers that are heart shaped. What do you call them? My mother had them all over the place, but it's a set of one, two, three six of them i love them they're beautiful so that is it and then the last minute before i leave i have to buy one more thing splurge it was from this amazing dyer called knitting notions her colors were beautiful um if she had more luxurious bases like Lost City Knits and Spirit Trail Fiberworks, their colors are, are amazing and their yarn bases are extraordinary. And that's what makes them like all time favorites. But these, this woman's colors were like right up my alley. This is like a, a, a blue with like, it's called Winter Sky. And it does have some kind of gray to it. This is called Paprika and it matches its name. It's like a coppery, orangey brown. And this, it's called Peaches and Cream, but she said it was a dye mistake and it came out more yellowy and brown. And I just thought they went well together. So they will be a three colored shawl. And that is almost the extent of my damage. <laughs> I bought a basket. So you know what, um, Rhinebeck, they sell these woven baskets. And I've been going to Rhinebeck for years, before even Ravelry existed, before it took up the whole, <laughs> the whole uh, fairgrounds. It used to just be half. And I found it because they used to share the fairgrounds with a, a gemologist. And I was into crystals and stones and things like that back then. And I used to go to check out that, and I had, I'd have my daughter with me who was very small back then, and she would like to go and pet all the little sheepies. So I've been going there for a long, long time, and they, there was a vendor there selling these baskets for like $5. <laughs> now they're like, everybody wants one, so they're like $50. But anyway, I bought one for 45. It's a bigger size than I, the one I do have. And I like the style. I like the plain style. It's like a purpley, it's a very dark purple. It's not black. Um, it was either this one, I almost bought one that was just totally plain, but this is the one I liked. And it's a great bag for carrying my stuff around in. So that's, that's it, that's it. So now, if, if you want to hear about my hike, and you, um, well, first I'll talk about the summer stripe along. I'll give you all the details. But if you want to also hear about my little hike today, 
I'll talk a little bit about that and I'll also put some little video clips that I took along the way. Um, otherwise, if you don't want to watch all that or hear about all that, I will see you next time and thanks for joining me. So let's get right into it. I have two cows officially and um, I'm going to say unofficially it's uh, the senior love along is a perpetual cow. Uh, I, a cow. I will set up new threads soon for this year but um, probably I was thinking you know beginning of July I'll start I'll start that thread but uh, any kind of little crafted gift that you think the seniors might love to have and, and including washcloths um, are good for that cow and I save my best prizes like this lace weight uh, silk lace from Denise for that cow because for me it's the most important one because it's us giving back so you know if you want to start knitting stuff making stuff for that yes we're doing it I also have my um, yearly uh, goals cow and that is uh, broken up into four parts the first part was um, first part was what did we do the first part oh home, hand spun and this part that we're already a month into almost a month into now is for knitting up whips that you've had sitting around that were started before 2017 I'm working on my um, my app blossom uh, shawl and I have another project to work on after that but uh, so far we only have a couple of people posting stuff so if you have whips that you're trying to get done doesn't matter how far along you are just put them on there and uh, I have the Stephen West Shaw book um, West Knits Best Knits up for grabs as a prize and uh, as of now you have a very good chance of winning so check it out it's uh, over I think it's the end of June yeah the end of June so two months left. You can enter as many projects as you want for chances. Um, the new one that will start June 1st is in collaboration with other um, podcasters. Um, Emily from the Anders Mill podcast is the one that started this. Emily and um, Helen from Giddy Knits, I think it was. They had this idea to do some kind of stripe stripe along stripe knitting so either self striping yarn or striped patterns um, and it's a craft uh, along so basically you can do any type of craft as long as stripes are involved they um, other podcasts besides giddy knits which is Helen and uh, Anders Mill knits which is Emily it's uh, Simply Stashless, which is Karen, and I love Karen's podcast. I've been watching it since she first started, and I know it's been over a year. I mean, she, she stopped for a little while, but I love her little tips on how to, um, I don't want to be, I want to say be conservative, but respect the environment. How's that? Um, she gives little things that we can do she, she's she's in it 100% that's for sure and I, I can't profess to be uh, in it 100% but I do pay attention when she recommends things and because there are things we can do to to leave less of a footprint on the environment so that's one of the things I love about Karen's podcast I also love how she um, uses things up <laughs> Or gets rid of them and I and she does a lot of spinning and a lot of knitting so it's she keeps it very interesting and I love her dogs her pet all her pets are so beautiful I love them so uh, if you haven't I highly recommend Karen's simply stash list podcast as well and the last one is another podcaster that's very special to me she started I don't know if it was before or after but right around the same time as I did and that's um, Sprite 966 or Helen um, she is from Scotland and I've been watching her since she started and I just love Helen she is wonderful she does some amazing knitting projects 
And I tell you, one of the things I look forward to, even my husband loves to listen to her podcast because he loves her accent. <laughs> and uh, I love listening. I don't, sometimes I don't know what she's saying, but I still love to listen to her <laughs> because her accent is so strong. And I, I always wonder if she, when she's watching my podcast, if she says, oh, Amy with that New York accent, <laughs> or I can't understand her or something like that. I don't know. Helen, do you understand me when I talk? <laughs> silly anyway that's kind of what's coming we're gonna break it up into categories one is socks so striped socks um, one is accessories like shawls hats uh, mitts um, and one of the other projects I want to do are a pair of fingerless mitts and um, we're gonna do garments toys and blankets and sewing so that's pretty much the cow information so what did I do today? I did, um, this is a new to me um, trail today. I uh, spent a lot of time in this particular park. It's Fawnstock Park. It's a state park. It's right off of the Taconic State Parkway. The Appalachian Trail runs through it. So the trails are very well maintained and marked. And um, I looked it up and I decided I found one that was about four miles, which is a nice, nice, it's a, like, it's a little pushing it for me, especially if it's a trail, because usually they're not flat and it's, um, but, and it said it would take about three hours and that was kind of, and it was marked easy. And since it was the first time, I wanted to make sure I didn't get in, into something over my head, right? So I downloaded the map, printed it up and, um, got here and the road to where they tell you to park was closed still because it's in between seasons so I walked down the road and I had a hard time finding the trail to be honest with you at first it, I couldn't find the entrance to the trail but once I did I was fine um, so it goes around this lake let me pull out the map I'll show it to you already I won't remember but I can't do the map So it's Canopus Lake Trail is what it's called and, and most of it <clears throat> is all this side is Appalachian Trail. You can see here the dotted trails, that's Appalachian Trail and um, it basically runs along the Appalachian Trail and then here the Appalachian Trail veers off and I started down here. Went all the way up this side, this was nice. But it looks like the trail would like provide you this beautiful view, scenic view of the lake, but it doesn't. So the trail is actually very high up on this uh, upper mountain. And a lot of the edge of the lake is kind of like a steep cliff. So you can't walk down by the lake. And you can't really see the lake because the trees are so thick. So it really just was a rustic wooden woods woodsy trail um, a couple of streams but not nearly as beautiful as the silver mine trail or the um, Anthony's nose which is still my favorite and both of those have um, are partially uh, uh, have the Adirondack trail runs through them but uh, it was nice it wasn't as long as the map said it would be and then when you're on, so I started off on the one side of the lake and the other side of the lake, which is the side I'm on now, which is this side, it's all on the road, which is almost, it's not a highway, but it's a, a very busy road. And so other half of the hike, I was walking on a road with cars wailing by me and breathing carbon monoxide and it, I was right along the lake but it wasn't as nice as walking through the woods and not hearing things and so um would I do it again yeah for a quick walk but what I would do next time is I probably um 
Parker walk down that one road where you're supposed to park, which will uh, will be open again in the summertime because they have a swimming beach down there on the lake. Um, it's also a snowshoeing uh, path in the winter that they they keep maintained and they patrol. I don't do snowshoeing, but um, you know it's it's open in the winter and it's open in the summer. But I guess we're in between, so it's not open yet. Um, so I, I will either park down there or walk down there and I will walk to one end and instead of going out to the road I will walk back on the same side. So that would be probably about a little over three miles and that's fine and it was um, not flat it was a little up and down so there were some spots where my heart rate went up so I felt like I was getting a nice exercise out of it which is always nice um, and but it's definitely not my favorite trail definitely not my favorite trail so that's all I'll say about that this is an awesome park they have um, the snowshoeing trails they have um, um, they have a, a trail that you're not even allowed to walk on because it's it's it is only for um, cross-country skiing and they maintain it for cross-country skiing and you just need to get a permit and also the lake has a swimming area which uh, is very nice and clean and it also has uh, fishing you can get a boat permit and you can bring a, a rowboat or a canoe or a kayak out on the lake so there's lots of great things to do in this park and if you're in the area it's definitely worth checking out and there are other trails, so maybe I'll try some other trails in the future, but uh, I think I'm going to stick to Harriman State Park because they got the best trails as far as I'm concerned. And so that's it. I'm exhausted. I don't even know what time it is, but I think I'm going to head home and hang out with my husband and maybe have an iced vanilla latte and cast on a huge Bear Isle sweater by Alice Garmore. So I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Thanks for joining me here in the beautiful Hudson Valley, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. It's Amy. I am out hiking again. I am on the Adirondack Trail up at Flonstock State Park in, um, it's right off the Taconic State Parkway in Putnam, Putnam County. Anyway, I'm doing a hike around the lake and this just stopping for a little bit of rest. It's Canopus Lake. It's the map. It's about five mi uh, four miles and it's supposed to be an easy trail you could tell because it's got the white markers. It was blue for a little while. Um, some of these trails are also um, snowshoeing trails in the winter. But, um, so this is my first time on this trail. I've never done it before. I should not be alone. Uh, I was supposed to be with my son, but he canceled on me, so I'm by myself, and I feel quite confident that I won't get lost. So, anyway, I downloaded the map, by the way, so I have GPS map. So it would be really hard for me to get lost. Anyway, I just want to take a pit stop. I think you can, can you see the lake behind me a little bit? Look, through the trees? I'll stop again when I have a better view. Alright, so here you can see the lake behind me. I am not even halfway through. <laughs> I thought it was a good view because I'm kind of up high. Um, I don't see anybody else on the trails today. Anyway, let me keep going. Let's see, so, I don't know if you can really appreciate this, but there's like a stream running underneath all these rocks. Let me see if I can get a good idea. Can you kind of see it? Yeah. I'm almost halfway. It's beautiful here. As you can see, it has the trail markers, the white trail markers. White means easy. It is technically, I think, still the Appalachian Trail. And I'm starting to come down the side of the mountain slash hill. It's not really a mountain, but it's it was a bit of a hike. Really enjoying it. I'll catch you. I think the next stop is going to be lunch. Made it halfway around. There's the lake. 
So now I'm on the other side of the lake and it runs pretty much along this road which is 301 or also known as uh, Cold Spring Turnpike. So uh, my car is probably like a mile up the road but I'm going to get back on the trail. You can see here there's an Appalachian sign trail and there is, if you see on this tree here, right there is the marker for the Appalachian Trail. <laughs> Alright, so I'm back on it. And then when I get back to the car and eat my lunch, I'll, I'll, pack, I'll show my whips after that. I'm just going to show it along the trail, but there was no really good places to set up a camera, so no. I'll see you in a little bit.